Now welcome to the last stop on this tour bus To the top where I was told her work would lure us Sure enough, look where I'm headed The opposite direction of the life that I dreaded I'm about to bring in Tim and AC Our two baseball correspondents, our baseball experts So what's up Tim? Nothing, nothing really Oh, come on. You're up to some. You're on the show, man. What's yeah, up, yeah, AC? Yeah. It was a weird day, though. I, I saw that whole Casey Anthony thing, and I, for the first time, watched that Nancy Grace lady because I turned on CNN, and that was, like, boring me to tears. So I turned her on, and it's just, like, a bunch of women who think that <laughs> no matter what, this lady was guilty. No, They shouldn't have even had a trial. They should have just given her a death penalty. I don't know if she was talking about the victim in the case or if she was talking about the attorneys having dinner and a couple drinks after the trial was over. I, you know, that lady blows me away. But let, let, Welcome to the show, AC. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great. Happy to be here, man. Very good. Uh, these are two hardcore, passionate baseball fans. Uh, I give you my word, guys. That uh, these guys love baseball, and they're going to bring it tonight. So, uh, you know, Tim, what's on your mind, man? What do you want to talk about tonight? You know, right off the jump, I'll, I'll give you the, the 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 steering wheel to the car. What's on your mind? Well, I mean, basically today I relaxed and took notes on the uh, All Star rosters. Basically, I broke down who deserved to be there, who didn't. I mean. Th- most of the people that were on the lineup or on both rosters deserve to be there, and um, there's obviously a few exceptions to that. But I think the biggest thing is there were a few guys who did deserve to be there that didn't. Some of them are in the final vote and will get in, and some of them won't get in. Okay. So over to Tim and AC. I know they got they want to talk about the Ulster thing. That's just a pressing topic, guys, that a lot of people want to, want to hear us talk about. So go ahead, Tim. Uh, give your all-star snubs, talk about who you don't think deserves to be on the team, and then I want to hear AC's thoughts on this. All right. Um, it's it's pretty simple. If you look at the starting lineup, there's probably a few guys in there that don't deserve to be starting. I mean, for the NL, Placido Polanco, he started off hot, but he hasn't continued to play that well. So I, I don't know. I don't have an alternate case, but he doesn't deserve to be starting. Other than that, in the starters for the National League position players, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, for the pitching, you can't complain much. I mean, Tyler Clifford of Washington gets in there. He's been an elite reliever, 21 holes this season. Keith Bell is putting a strong case up to get traded or get a new contract next year. 25 saves. Cole Hamels or Roy Halladay, one of those two guys will be the starters. They're competing for the Cy Young 1-2 and two right now in the NL. Uh, Johnny Benners has been, he has the tools to be one of the best relievers in baseball. And uh, for the reserves, there's nothing that really strikes anything with me. I'm happy in the AL that Alex Avila got in. I thought Joe Maurer would maybe be starting. I'm happy Avila got in. He deserved a gone. Adrian Gonzalez obviously deserves to be on. Jose Batista, I mean, the numbers this guy puts up are just so unreal. I'm not saying I'm not hanging at anything, but they they just don't look real. They're so good right now. He he is easily beating his season last year with the average. Uh pitching wise, Josh Beckett's done a tremendous job and the two guys really competing for the spot would be or to start would be Justin Verlander and uh Jared Weaver. So we'll see what happens there. Dare or not Derek Cheater. Just or Jared Weaver. Derek Cheater does not deserve to be starting uh, it, what is that, Derek Jeter? What is Derek Jeter doing anywhere near that team? He's batting two fifty six with two home runs. How is as Drupal Cabrera the Indians not starting? This is guy has had a tremendous season. He's always been good with the glove and the bat is coming around too. I, I, I just don't get it. I do not get it at all. For the final vote in the NL I, I did not vote for the All-Star game because I think it's a waste of time, but I did go on today and vote for the final vote. Uh, I think you got to either go with Michael Morse or Ian Kennedy. It's hard to compare because one's a position player and one's a pitcher. I think Ian Kennedy is the guy I voted for in the AL. I think it's clearly Paul Canerco. 
he has been one of the few bright spots on that White Sox team. I think he deserves to get in. I do not understand how CC Sebastia is not at least on the final vote ballot. It, it blows my mind away, but it is what it is. And what do you? What's your take on all that, AC? I mean, uh, I, I pretty much agree. In, in the AL, Alex Avila had a tremendous season so far. Agon's your AL MVP if the season would end today. Um, Jeter got in there because of his name. I don't think anybody's questioning that right now. And if you are, you need to take a serious look at a, a baseball game. Um, Vilbo Cabrera, there's absolutely zero reason why he shouldn't be starting. I I don't get that either um, as well. In the NL, the, the thing about Placido Polanco is He's he's pretty consistent. I mean, he not he, he doesn't he doesn't have a ta- uh, he's a, he's not a streaky guy. He he always he's always kind of sticking around there. And I don't really see who you could put. I don't think Chipper Jones has uh, put up the numbers or, or shown me anything to show that he is uh, more of a starter in the in the All Star game than uh, than Placido Walker for for the National League. Um, the pitching for the National League, J.R. Jurgens has blown everybody away. I, I'm every game I watch uh, that he pitches, I'm, it's it's just incredible. I, I can't say anything more. Um, he spells a boss. Brian Wilson needs to work on his anger management. Um, and we got a couple of good relievers in there. Um, same same thing for the AL. Verlander's been a beast so far. Jared Weaver's uh, putting up some good numbers to counter Verlander, I guess you could say. But I, I'd still pick Verlander if I got a if I had a choice between the two. As far as the final vote goes, um, I think Canerco is my American League guy because he's killing everybody in RBIs. He's got like 20 more RBIs than everybody else on that list. Um, his average, he's hitting above 300, 21 home runs, just uh, having a kick-ass year really so far for him. Um, for the a- for the uh, NL rather, I think my guy's Andre Ethier because he's hitting 317. He's only two points behind Todd Helton, and I know that Ian Kennedy has been uh, really stellar this season. With that uh, 338 ERA and uh, eight and three record, that's that's pretty pretty good for him. Um, and but but each year's putting up 41 RBIs, which is only five behind Michael Morse. Um, and to me, he he's shown that that he's an All Star this year. So uh, he got my vote on on the final vote there. What about Bobby Uribe? Uribe. What's up? Oh. Bobby Uribe, the DH. Do you think he should have got on there? Mm, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I'm I'm satisfied with what they have, I think. All right. Um, so, in the last week, Tim... As far as the teams are concerned, has anyone really stuck out in your mind in a positive way? Do you think anyone's really got it going right now? Yeah, the Pirates, man. They, they are above 500 at the All-Star game for the first time and who knows when, maybe 20 years. Since the last time, they probably had Willie Stargell and Barry Bonds on their team. I mean, Kevin Correa had a tremendous season last year with the uh, Padres, and I was one of the people who thought he wouldn't come back and do that this year. Well, he, he's had a pretty good season with 11 wins. Andrew McCutcheon is another huge all-star snob. He's batting 291. He leads the team in home runs with 12. He leads the, or he's uh, second in RBIs with 46. He's leading the team in steals with 15. He's that guy that everyone knows on the Pirates. If you don't, he's got dreadlocks, really, really talented outfielder, and he's still young. The Pirates might not be as far off at of, uh, contending as we thought. I don't think they're going to hang around to the point where they're going to contend, but this uh, 20 straight years of not having a winning season might end after this season. 
Okay. What about you, AC? Do you agree? I agree completely. I agree completely. I mean, the Pirates are showing that they have the pieces to absolutely contend uh, in the next couple of years. I, I don't. That's not in question with me at all. Uh, McCutcheon's showing that he's. You could you could probably start to build a team around a guy like that. He he's showing that he's one of the top uh, guys in the league right now. But uh, my team that, that, that jumped out for me uh, is actually the number one in the power rankings, the Yankees. Uh, they got a 13-5 and overall interleague record. Um, but the big thing for me is that they won all six series that they played against NL teams. Uh, they were 5-1 uh, and one against the Brewers and the Mets. So, I mean, they're, they're really they're stepping it up, especially against the National League. And uh, I, I enjoy, I really enjoy watching interleague play, and they've really uh, acted like the team that they were supposed to be on uh, this this past, past couple of games. So I think they've cranked it up a notch too, and uh, it's starting to heat up in both the East divisions. What 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 are you seeing from Seattle right now, uh, Brian? What do you got? What are you seeing from Seattle? Um, just, just from their overall standpoint as a team, I think. Yeah. Right now, right now, I think, man, they, man, they they got to step it up in the, these, these next couple games because if they drop like two more, they can be down like, you know, they could be, you know, seven games behind the, you know, division leader. But you know, that you know their problem, you know. Like always, is their offense, man. I mean, look, they're thirtieth overall in runs, batting average, on base percentage, and slugging percentage. They just, they're just trashy. And, and you know, the crazy thing is, man, they they have a very good starting five, you know, in their their lineup. Problem is, is that you know, I, you know, it really has detracted from their uh, offenses. Each row batting two seventy four, and you know. Ichiro has always been a solid 300 every single year, and right. lack, the lack of a and the lack of you know of a great you know slugging you know a guy that you fear in the lineup that sometimes will force the team you know to to go ahead and just you know walk you know they really lack that. Let me, uh, yeah, they they really lack that man. I mean, but but you have Brandon Ryan, Brandon Ryan. Uh, you know, you got Felix Hernandez, who's who's been their ace for years. They they have uh, Eric Bedard, and they've they've had some good, very good pitch, pitchers. You know, in a very good uh, lineup, and they've had some aces. They had you know uh, what's it called, called it Cliff, Cliff Lee a year ago, like a couple years ago. But they just their offense has been trashy, and it's always has been trashy. Yeah, I think that, that that's that's what's gonna fail them in the end. All right, so uh, go ahead. Uh, for them, I mean, Pineda is really had a nice year. He's as many wins as Hernandez right now. The ERA is even uh, Hernandez is like fourth in that team in ERA. Michael Pineda, I think I believe that's his name. I, if I got the first name wrong, I apologize. Two fifty eight ERA, a one oh one WHIP. He's second in the team in strikeouts with 106. This guy is the real deal. And, again, the Mariners have pitching and no offense. And it is time to start looking to build around someone besides Ichiro because this guy is 39 years old and he is bound to slow down. I think we're starting to see that. Justin Smoke's a good yeah. player. He's the key piece that they got around uh, or from the Cliff Lee trade. But I don't think he's good enough to build around. He's one of the pieces you build with but not around. And it's tough to get offense. In the bottom line, we saw here in Philly the exact opposite thing. It was tough to get pitching here. You just got to develop the offense. Like, we developed some yeah. pitching. They win the World Series, and now there's a lot of pitchers want to come here. The Mariners got to start winning, and then they'll get some offensive players that want to come there. Are you on Skype, yeah. brother? Me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, actually. No, I'm not. no, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Were you guys hearing that too? Is he breaking up on your ends? Uh, not so. Not he, he wasn't breaking up. He was just, he was just high pitched. I think. 
a little scratchy right, so, for me, but that's all. Okay, yeah, it was. All right, anyway, <laughs> uh, going forward, what do you think of uh, what do you guys think of the Angels right now? Starting with Tim. They're eight and two in their last ten. They've won three in a row right now. Their run differentials up to twelve. I think they're they're a good team. They have to stay. They have to start winning more games at home. On the road, they're twenty four and twenty this year. At home, they're twenty one and twenty one. So if they can start winning some more games at home, they got to get guys like Burn and Wells going. But I think Dan Harris having doing a good job this season, and Jared Weaver, if he can stay healthy, is certainly a Cy Young candidate. So I, I still think the Rangers, once Josh Hamilton gets going, will win this division. But it's not going to be easy for them. What about you, AC? No, the Angels are definitely going to put up, uh, at least give the Rangers a run for their money right now because they're they're hanging around here. Um, like you said, they got they got some great pitching going right now. Weaver, he needs he needs to stay healthy. He absolutely needs to stay healthy because he's. He's the leader of this squad, and if, and if he can continue to do uh, what he's doing right now, I don't see any reason why uh, he couldn't win the Cy Young. Um, that's basically all I got. What do you think? Yeah, what's your take on the Cy ask- Young comment? What's your take on the Cy Young comment, uh, Tim? Me? Uh I think that right now, if you ask me who I would take as a Cy Young, I'm taking Justin Verlander because uh, Weaver's pitched a few less games because of injury, although the numbers for him do look better. He hasn't thrown nearly the amount of innings. He's 11-3 and three with the 232 ERA, Verlander, while Weaver's 10-4 with the 192 ERA. So the numbers look a better, look, little better for Weaver. But I think it's the same thing when you look at Cole Hamels and Roy Halladay. Cole Hamill's ERA is lower, but you cannot put a price on the amount of innings Roy Halladay throws. And I think Verlander's turning into that sort of workhorse type, and I think that's making him one of the top, if if not the top, pitcher in baseball. Okay. Now, what about San Diego? Do they have a chance to turn it around? They've been playing all right as of late, Tim. I think anyone in that division has a chance to turn around. I mean, I was asked if the Diamondbacks have a chance. I think anyone has a chance in that division. I, I do not think the Giants have what it takes to win it this year. I'm sorry. I've said that numerous times since the beginning of the season. I think that the Colorado Rockies will get hot this second half. they got a lot of guys to get going. Um, Gonzalez, Carlos Gonzalez is going to get going. they got pitching that needs to get going with uh, Ubaldo Jimenez. But I think he will get going because when we saw him successfully last year, this guy was, I mean, after the first half, he looked like clear-cut Cy Young Award winner, and he fell off in the second half. I think him being hurt and him missing some time may have been a blessing for them because I think maybe he can pitch through the full season this year. But they're seven games back, and the Giants the Giants got to add offense. And I, I've heard Jose Ray's name in there a lot. But I don't really think of him as, like, a game changer. I think of him as probably a guy who I would put in the NL MVP race right now. And he's a very, very good shortstop in a league where there's not a lot of those left anymore. But I think that something about him isn't the type of guy you bring in to carry your team to the second half. they got to add a big bat with some pop. All right, what about you, Tim? I mean, uh, AC, sorry. <laughs> um. Like he said, in that division, I don't think anybody's completely out of the running right now. The Diamondbacks are absolutely showing life. Um, the Giants, I still think they will win the division. I, I, that, I, I do disagree with Tim. I think they will win the division. I, I think they have what it takes. I don't see them winning anything past that. Uh, maybe they'll get to the NLCS, but I, I don't see anything past that uh, for them because they haven't. Like like we said, he, they haven't made any moves or anything. They haven't made any drastic changes to to upgrade. Um, the 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 Padres. I don't know a whole lot about the Padres right now. Um, I, I I don't really follow them that much. Uh, this division's kind of like a toss up for me. But you know, with the the Rockies. Um, I do have something on the Rockies. Looking at the Rockies lineup and and their pitching. You'd figure, you know, this team should be in first place, shouldn't they? So, 
I don't know. I think I think that uh, they, if they play up to their full potential, per se, I, I think they could definitely snag this division uh, from the Giants as far as uh, the NL West goes. All right. Do you uh, have any opinions on all of this, uh, Brian? Uh, I think, man, Western College has the talent to, to do it, man. The Giants, man. I, I don't. I mean, I, I actually thought that they they would they would be the class of that division. You know, the, uh, the was it the ALC uh, ALC South ALC East? Oh yeah, the AL East. Yeah, AL AL East. Is yeah, that right? I, I'm sorry, I guys. I was distracted. Tim, respond to him. I just said to answer the door. In the West, sorry. NOS. Oh, NOS, my fault. But, yeah, I think they have the talent, man. Um, you know, in their their lineup, you know, 1 through 12 or, you know, uh, 1 through 12 in their pit, pitcher staff, I think they I think they could do it, man. They got the – they have a deep bullpen, and they have um, George Shield, you know, as their they, – don't they still have him as a, uh, the closer? Or am I – was it a different Who's dude? Who's that? George Shiel. George Sherrill. No, I think he's in the Braves bullpen now. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I just like their talent, man. I think they, they, they're the ones that do it in that division. All right, I'm looking at some here. Uh, Tim, what else is on your mind? I'm looking something up. Well, I mean, right now you got to. Uh, AC, did you say that the Yankees are ranked number one in the power ranking? Yes, they are. They are. Yep, they are. That, let me guess, that's on BSPN? Yes, it is. Yeah, well, that's... that's yeah, I was going to say, well, why, why are they number one? Well, I was about well, to say, why are they number one? I'm shocked that picking the New York team. I mean, the Phillies have like a... I'm not trying to be a homer here. The Phillies have three and a half more... If they were in the same division, the Phillies would be up by three and a half games right now. It's not even close. Yeah. The Phillies' offense has gotten them by, and their pitching has been stacked. Who cares if they lost Roy Oswald? Because uh, Cole Hamels and Roy Holiday are one and two in the Young right now. Cliff Lee is in the discussion. It depends what he does in the second half. He's borderline yeah, and top Howard, five, don't, right? don't forget Howard's tied for second RBIs in the in the major leagues. Yeah. And Ryan Howard's big match exactly. for July, August, and September. This guy is not a guy who normally makes all-star teams because he starts slow, but this guy carries his team offensively in the second half of the year. So I think the Phillies are only going to get better. When people were saying that they were going to only that they were going to win 103 games this year, I thought they were out of their mind. But the pitching has been so good that I'm starting to believe that that's possible. I mean, who knows what happens when Joe Blanton comes back? I don't think much. But when you have three legit starters with Halliday, Lee, and uh, Hamels, who knows what happens with Oswald. He's he's a very good starter when he's in there. But Vance Worley has come out and pitched absolutely tremendous. The last two starts, including last night, he has won one to nothing. He is a potential trade piece for a guy like Michael Kadire, but th- their rotation is deep enough and their lineup is doing enough to win the game. Um, I, they did that last year in the regular season, and it hurt them in the playoffs, which is what scares a lot of people. But I think right now, I don't understand how you could not put the Phillies at one. The Yankees are clearly two, because the Red Sox were just a mess in interleague play. Uh, they got a little hot after they left the Pirates and the Phillies. But that team that team kind of scares you now, because we saw them play against NL teams, and they weren't successful. I mean, I know the Pirates are doing well. But the bottom line is the Red Sox should go in there and sweep the Pirates. It doesn't matter if Ortiz is in the lineup or not. Your pitching is better. Your payroll is about 100 some million more. That's an embarrassment. And maybe the Red Sox aren't a team built for a World Series. Maybe we could see a Yankees fill it. Hell, man, maybe we could see Indians and Giants or Indians and Cardinals. I think that we why, why are not. You, why, aren't you higher, why aren't you higher on the Braves? Well, I, I look at the Braves and I just I don't see their offense being there enough. They're eight and two in the last ten, but they they were pretty close to the Phillies last year for most of the season. There were even times where the Phillies were like five or six games out. And I think for the Braves, they don't have that finishing offense and they don't have that finishing team. Chipper Jones down the stretch the last few years has gotten hurt with weird injuries. 
I don't think this guy can play a full season, and I don't think they have that guy pitching-wise that's just going to carry them. I mean, they have a bunch of very good pitchers. Tim, Hutz, Tim Hudson's an ace on most staffs. Uh, Jair Jurgen's having a great year, although I, I expect that to come back to earth a little bit. I think the bridge... I, uh, so I want to interject. Okay. According to MLB.com and according to FoxSports.com, the Phillies are number one in power rankings. According to CBSSports.com and according to ESPN, have the Yankees number one. I'm sorry. So don't, don't it depends on what power well. rankings you look at. So what you're doing is you're taking exception with the ESPN and CBS Sports power rankings, while MLB and uh, Fox Sports, I think they got it right. I think Fox Sports does the best job on baseball at any of these. They're the ones I respect the most. They got guys like John Paul Morosi and um, Ken Rosenthal, best baseball reporter. ESPN has a bunch of these. Tim Kirchin's good on ESPN. I don't have any issues with Tim Kirchin. Uh Baseball tonight's become somewhat of a joke in my mind. Buster only. I, I cannot stand this guy. He is so biased towards the <laughs> It's not even funny. He, he's a robot. I swear, this guy is a robot. He has no personality. All he does is name, like, random stats that nobody cares about. They'll, he'll be on baseball tonight, and they'll be trying to talk. They'll be laughing about something, and he'll just come in here with this buzzkill thing that no one wants to hear. I, I just I can't stand him, and I, I don't think he knows a ton about baseball. I just think he has sources, and that's why people respect him, because he reports these things first. Hey, but you, but you respect the Tim Kirchner, though, right? Yeah, I, I like Tim Kirchner a lot. Right. So at this point, Tim and AC... Because when you go across the power rankings, you see some that contradict each other. Most of them have the Red Sox at third. In fact, in fact, I think they all do. But the next disagreement between these power rankings is between the Rays and Braves at four and five. So, Tim, uh, I think the Braves are on the cusp of passing the Rays. I really do. If they can continue to play good baseball like they have been as of late, I mean, they've been flying up the power rankings list. I remember they were down there, what, around seven, eight, nine, for a while. Yeah. Now, now, now they're conclusively in the top five. So, do you think it's too early to put the Braves ahead of the Rays? I think no matter what, the Braves will end up ahead of the Rays because I think the Rays, no matter what, may be sellers at this deadline with guys like James Shields, who I believe is an All Star. Because when you're a small market team like that, you, you cannot afford to let people walk away. So I think the Rays will end up winning 84 games somewhere in that area, which is more than I anticipated at the beginning of the season. Johnny Damon's playing out of his mind. He's found the fountain of youth. But that that's going to come back to earth. I, I do think the Braves are a tremendously talented team, and they could certainly give anyone a run. They have one of the best catchers in baseball, Brian McCann. Freddie Freeman, they're... Uh, rookie first baseman starting to get going, and man, the back of that bullpen is just filthy. Johnny Venters, I think, didn't allow like an extra base hit for his first like twenty some games, and Craig Kimbrell as a closer has done a tremendous job. So the Braves certainly can make a run. I just I don't believe they have the offense to do it. All right, and AC, what do you feel? Do you agree, or do you have a different take? Well, ESPN, uh, I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the different power rankings, and ESPN actually has the Braves at four above the Rays right now. Um, yes. And I don't I don't see a problem with that at all because, like Tim said, they're showing that, they, that they're they hot on the Phillies' tail. They're only four games out, which I think is shocking a lot of people, and I don't really think it should. Uh, I've, the Braves have a high-powered offense and, and, and a really dirty bullpen, and it's, I don't know if I'd want to uh, take this. I don't know if I'd want to take the starter out of the game early and get into that bullpen because that's just nasty what they got going in there. So, um, and and like like Tim said with the Rays, they're probably going to be de- dealers at the deadline and they're going to go out and try and get something for r- rather have something than nothing, I guess, for some of these guys that they're going to be losing. So I I, I don't. 
see any reason why the Braves shouldn't be at number four. They're they're a great squad right now. Yeah, they are. They're playing good baseball too. Of course, here comes the Braves again, Brian. What is that? The Braves. <laughs> yeah, here comes the Braves again. Oh man. Man, I don't, I don't know what to say about the Braves, man. To be honest. They always get it going, Tim. <laughs> you can count on the Braves. Now, the thing I find funny is that some of these Homer Cub fans here in the city <laughs> thought the Cubs had a chance to be relevant. So every week I like to take shots at the Cubs. And, uh,. Once again, man, I mean, this is a team that has proven that with Jim Hendry running the team, I like to harp on this every week, they're going nowhere. So, in your opinion, Tim, they need to back up the truck. Do you agree? In your opinion. Yeah, yeah they need to blow it up. And the issue for them is with guys like Alfonso Soriano still under contract, it's going to be tough to do that. But they got to move on from guys like... Carl Sambrano, that guy is a bad culture, at least for the Cubs. Sometimes guys become bad cultures in certain places, and they get a fresh start somewhere else, and they're good. I think Carl Sambrano is a nutcase, to be quite honest with you, but who knows? I think that they need to blow that up, and I think that they need to build through the farm system more than they have. Yeah, well, All right, what about you, AC? That's going to take years, man. Oh, it could take, it's going to take years. That's why you start now. In my opinion. What do you think, AC? There's always a rebuilding phase for a team sooner or later. Now is the time for the Cubs to start the rebuilding process. There's no question in my mind. I mean, come on. Your 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 uh, only pitcher is Matt Garza, and then you got nothing after that. Carlos Zambrano is your uh, best winner with six games. Are you kidding me? That, that's yeah. pitiful. That's pitiful. And you could bring so up run support with him. You could bring up spread pitching. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. I mean, that, that team is, is horrible. What about the White Sox? All right, I got I got Chicagoans who listen to our show, so I got to bring up the Homer teams. Tim, will the White Sox in the second half of the season get it going and contend for at least a wild card, which I, I don't see happening? Well, when you got teams like the Yankees, Rays, and Red Sox, but uh, will they at least contend for the division? I still think they'll win the division. They're only three games out, and I think they're clearly the most talented team in that division. I just do not have a trust with the Indians. The Tigers are a good team, but I don't think they're going to blow anybody away. So if they can get guys like Adam Dunn going, they're only three games out. No one in that division is going to run away. It could probably be won by a team that wins 85 games. So the wild card is out of the question. That's going to be Yankees or Red Sox, one of them. Uh, a guy who's really stepped it up for them this year, Philip Humber, a former uh, top prospect for the Mets, who's kind of a cast off, didn't work out there. 269 ERA. Uh, my bad, though. I had some audio thing. Uh, I think that they certainly have a chance. they got to get some guys going. And Kenny Williams, there is no better GM at adding guys at the deadline on weird trades that seem to work out. All right, you brought up Kenny Williams. What do you think of the people that say Ozzie Guillen's run his course? Because I've been hearing that again this week. Yeah, I do think he's run his course there. I think that he is an act that can only work for five or six years tops, and he's past that, I believe. He won a ring for them, and he's probably only there because of that. I think that he's done a nice job there, and he's going to keep them in contention. But if they really want to win a ring, they have to go out and get an elite starter. I think we figured out by now that that Jake Peavy thing, he just can't stay healthy anymore. And Mark Burley just isn't that anymore. He, he, he's been one of the most overrated starters over the past few years. He has an ERA near four every year. He's overrated. So they got to go out and add, add some pitching. Maybe Mark Matt Burley. Garza of the Cubs oh, would Mark make Burley. sense. Oh, Matt phone. Garza of the Cubs? Yeah. Do you think, do you think the Cubs would go for that? If they got the right prospects in return, I, 
I actually don't think the Cubs would go for that because I think the Cubs are delusional and they think they're going to win. But he, is at, <laughs> he is in the last season of his deal. So I understand they got to him at the beginning of the season for, again, the Cubs gave up way too much for a guy who had a near four ERA last year. But moving back into the – or moving into the AL Central might help this guy. He could be a fit there. Yeah. Yeah. AC, thoughts on the Cubs and Sox? The Garza thing that Tim just brought up makes sense for both sides. I mean, seriously, the the Sox have a chance to be a legitimate contender this year. And let's face it, the Cubs need prospects, and they need somewhere to start in this mess that they've created for themselves. So, I mean, you got to start somewhere. And if if the Sox have the right prospects... Um, and to, to deal, and they want to go, and they and they feel like they can win this division uh, this year and, and make a run in the playoffs. Why not? That sounds like a great deal to me uh, for both sides. But um, the White Sox, they're not that they're not that far off. They just need to get some guys going in their lineup. Um, the Jake Peavy thing, he's he's done. I, I, I'm tired of people saying that he's going to come back because cause he's done. He's been done for a couple of years now. Um, I, I, he's just too injury plagued. It's plain and simple. I don't think be... he's done as a starter. I think he can be a very good three or four starter. You just can't expect him to stay uh, healthy. But well, when you can't when you can't stay healthy, yeah. you're not going to put up numbers uh, in, in games, and you're not going to get wins. You know what I mean? And it's not. Yeah. It's not going to be. A, it's going to be a reliability issue. You can't rely yeah, on him for anything. They rely on him too much, for sure. Yeah. Well, when you look at Juan Pierre, okay, Alex Rios and Gordon Beckham, these guys could get it going. And Adam Dunn, uh, I think I think the White Sox could really be a problem in the playoffs. But out of those guys, Pierre, Rios, Beckham, and Dunn, who do you think has the best chance to get it going, Tim, and who has the worst? I think that the matchup of Dunn in Chicago was like a perfect fit. It's a hitter's ballpark. He's going to get it going in that second half. He's not ever going to get to the point where he's going to have a reasonable average. This might be a year where you look at the average and say, oh. And the home runs probably aren't going to be 40, which, I mean, this guy's consistently hit 40 a season. So I think that he will get going. Gordon Beckham's a very good player. He hasn't turned out to be great. And I think the same thing goes for Alex Rios. That, that's the problem with the White Sox is they have had a few guys come up or have gotten a few guys like Rios who are good but not great. And Mark Burley you could maybe even put into that discussion. He's good but he's not great and he's making too much money to not be great or very good at least. Okay, what about you, AC? Yeah, what he said, what Tim said with the good but not great thing, I mean, Rios has got to put up better numbers. Um, Done. That that strike he's got a hundred and eight strikeouts this year. I mean, holy crap, man! We're not even halfway through yet. Hundred and eight strikeouts to eight home runs and thirty one RBIs. I mean, he's yeah. I I don't I don't think there's a question that he's got to get it going if if these guys are to make a run um, deep into the playoffs because you can't if you're a playoff contending team you can't have guys like Rios and Dunn. You know that that are, are are making some serious change and then not not performing out there on the field up to what they to what they should be. Not saying they're bad, they're just not good enough to be on a on a championship contending team. And I think that's what the White Sox are looking for this year. So I think guys like Beckham and Rios and Dunn all need to get it going. Uh, who has the best chance? I think it's Beckham. I think he's got the most, uh, shown the most promise over the first half of this season as far as those three guys go. But, I mean, everybody's got to start uh, start performing uh, better if this team's to go anywhere in the playoffs, in my opinion. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Tim. Bring up whatever other topics you want, man. All right, in the chat room, someone says something about Albert Poole is getting activated. This guy, we talked like a week ago about how we thought he'd be out six to eight weeks with this injury. I guess that was two weeks ago, but still. We thought he'd be out six to eight weeks. He heals fast, and 
I don't believe he's on steroids. But th this guy, is, something's up with this. The fact that he's coming back from a broken wrist in two weeks, and someone brought up the fact that Mark McGuire is on that coaching staff, something weird was all up with this. And I, I quite frankly think it's stupid. You got the break coming up in a week, and then really uh, after that, you're talking about being in a contract, you're being on a contending team. It's a contending team that's playing well without you. It's not like they need him back there right now. They need him to be healthy for the stretch run. And I, I just I don't get why he's coming back this season or uh, th this week this quickly. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I think it maybe could cause a bigger injury or he, he will just uh, not be playing as well, which is he might as well have just sat out. Jump in, guys. With a fracture in your left wrist, you can never be too careful. I mean, geez, man, I, I, I don't understand it either. You, you, you gotta, you're gonna come back for for what three, four games, and then you know sit out for the All Star break for three days. What the heck is that about? I, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me, and uh, I don't see how it makes sense to anybody else. Because it's not, it's not like those three games are, are, are a playoff series that they need him for or any, or anything real important. It's just a couple of games before the All Star break. So I don't see why he's rushing back, and I wouldn't be surprised if he injured it worse, and then they had him out for a long period of time, like a month or two, which would really suck. Yeah, a couple other. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Man. A few things else going on. Roger Clemens is trying to push push some blackmail theory now. Does anyone believe that Roger Clemens is innocent? Like, is there anyone that actually believes this guy wasn't lying? And is there anyone that thinks that he didn't take steroids? Is there anyone that takes him seriously at all anymore? That's no, what I, want to I don't know. think anyone cares. Like it's just his higher argument. The only person he's trying to convince at this point is himself. This guy, along with Barry Bonds, whether it's right or wrong, I think the government and everyone else could worry about more important things than steroids, but the bottom line is you lied to Congress, that's against the law, and they go to jail, That that's basically on them. Uh, I don't feel sorry for them because they tainted the game, and while they made it a good game, they tainted it. That's basically how I look at it. But, you know, but you know what the one thing, though, you, can, you can't say even though what they did was wrong. They did bring back baseball from the dead ball era to some degree. Yeah, uh, that, that's certainly true. I think baseball would have come back eventually. It would have maybe taken a few years longer, but something would have happened that baseball was going to come back to the forefront. Baseball, I was listening to a radio guy the other day, and I think baseball is not in a great state right now. I think that you could even make a case that the uh, NBA has somewhat become bigger, which a year ago I I would have laughed at if you told me. But with the whole well, LeBron James thing, it, it's gotten well, right well, there, if not better. The problem with yeah. the NBA is there's so many cities that have poor teams still. That, but I, I was exactly. listening to a radio guy, and he said that baseball is always going to be first or second in sports, and I don't necessarily think that's true. No, that's not true because you got to look at it this way. Baseball, all these sports outside of the NFL in America, every sport is a niche sport outside of football. That includes baseball and the NBA. NBA, really, NBA, it, it could be third or fourth on that list, to be honest, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Just, just looking at a few other things, uh, They've announced, like, the home run derby thing this year. I don't even know how they're doing it. They're picking, like, two sides. There's two captains. I think it's David Ortiz and Prince Fielder, the guys who have won the last two. And then they're, like, picking teams or something. I'm, I'm not even sure how they're doing it. But the home run derby, to me, has just become boring. I watched it last year. Corey Hart of the Brewers tore it up in the first round. The guy didn't get up for another hour and a half. A, there's way too many people in this. But B, it's like some – the big home run hitters don't even want to be in this anymore. You got Robinson Cano in the home run derby this year. Really, the guy's a great player. He's a 24 home run. Yeah. The guys that are supposed to be in the home run derby are like the guys who hit 
35, 40, even 50 home runs in Jose Batista's case. You know, get Ryan Howard in this. Get uh, Adrian Gonzalez is in it this year. I, I don't know if he I, – I can't – I watched him in batting practice the other day when I was at the Phillies Red Sox, and he doesn't seem like the type that swings for the fences. It just naturally happens. So I, I don't see him being successful in this. But, hey, Matt Holliday's in it. He's a good power hitter. Uh, Ricky Weeks, like this, this guy's a second baseman who I think the most home runs he's ever had is like 20-something. It just doesn't make sense. Matt Kemp belongs in there. Justin Upton's in there. There's. Does anyone feel the hey. need to watch this? Hey, hey, well, I, I got a, I got a thought for you. What's up? What's you know, up? You know, where that come from? Well, uh. <laughs> well, uh, anyways, um, you know who could actually be in it? No, no lie. You know who could actually be in the whole run derby? Oh, this is no lie. Ichiro. If you've seen him, yeah, I actually him, heard you know, something about that that they were considering him. I, I don't know. Like, cause I know he, 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 I've seen this guy. He 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 hits home runs when he wants to, when he's um at batting practice and stuff. Yeah, Finally, he hit a home run in batting practice. I have to say that. My, my, Michael Jordan used to crank him out of the stadiums in batting practice. Yeah, but yeah, but on what He's I'm saying, though, I mean, I, there's you know, but there's more to it though. I think man, he could be a power hitter if he wanted to. Man. If you, yeah. He, I don't. I just. I don't think he's the type of name that gets someone excited to watch a home run derby. It's like the that's, yeah, that's true. The whole All Star game, and it's still the best in sports because this is the only one that's somewhat competitive. Like the NBA is just dunking, the NFL, the Pro Bowl, they might as well not even have it. I mean, when, when you talk about yeah, the guys, there's no blitzing. Yeah, you can't even blitz the offensive line. Then I don't even know why they bring them out there because they don't do anything. It's like touch football. It's a, it's a waste of time. That's all it is. Yeah. But I, I think the baseball one's the best, but. All Star Game to me, it's just it's not exciting anymore. I, even if the games go, it's like the players when the players aren't emotionally invested into the game, you can tell. And I, I never feel that they're like that anymore. Well, well, well. When Kobe wants to, you know, play hard, play on, hard on both ends, it's fun to watch when nobody else is playing. It's fun to watch then. Yeah, <laughs> I just. <laughs> You know, uh, you know the thing about the All All Star Game and the you know Major League Baseball is competitive because it, it decides you know the home you know the home field advantage in the um, in the, you know in the uh, World Series, uh, uh, whichever um, conf- or not conference but a uh, league is uh, can be hosting it. So I like I do like that little stretch to it. I wish all of them could do that so they. All of them have, would have an incentive to act so you can watch some competitive, competitiveness of the best players in the league. Yeah, I mean, some some of it, it seems to me like, though, that the managers are more worried about their players not getting hurt and they're more worried about just getting through this game and moving on to the second half of the season. Like, if they were actually into this game, then I would like that, but I'm not a huge fan of it. The, the only reason Bud Selig ever did that was because he effed up the 03, 02, whatever year it was, All-Star game in Milwaukee. He's a dumbass, idiot yeah. commissioner. This guy... Yeah, he's the dumbest of them all. <laughs> yeah, he is, he's no by good. far. They're, they're, it was a tie game. They Both sides ran out of pitchers in like the 11th inning because mo- most pitchers just throw like one inning. So They run out of pitchers, and it's like, Buzz Sealer comes out and says, okay, we're going to stop. Like, it, that's not a normal baseball game. In a normal baseball game, you bring in a position player to come pitch, and Buzz Sealer is just like, I, I can't stand this guy because he lives in the past. He doesn't understand what's going on now. Joseph said it, like, last week. The guy is senile. He still thinks it's 1940, and Joseph also said he's waiting for him to get out of his horse and butt. Buggy, like, th- this guy just doesn't get it about baseball, and I don't know what it's going to take for him <laughs> to get put in. 
don't know. All the commissioners in sports right now, I'm not a fan of. I, can I know, man. That, 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 yeah, that's ridiculous, man, some of the plays that happened. I think I, I think it was the 2009 playoffs or 2008, 2009. I can't remember, but I remember those calls that they – that, uh, the ref, I mean, and, you know, credit to the uh, umpire. He knew he messed up, and he came out, and he even, uh, you know, he owned up to it. But uh, that that wouldn't have never happened had those replays um, been in effect. I think I think it was – I think what, what was it? Uh, um, it was a no-hitter that uh, Armando Galarraga, the Tigers, was about to throw. Like, it, it was – Yeah. People say yeah. that uh, instant replay is going to slow the game down. I don't see that as much because well, with, all the already the, down. <laughs> with all the time that the manager you know I mean? and the players waste arguing, couldn't you just go to instant replay and that would be it'd be a little longer? But baseball is a long game. Either you like it or you don't. But I'd rather see them yeah. get it right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's no. I'm tired of seeing oh. personally. I mean, I'm so tired of seeing umpires just ruin games left and right. And it really, it, it really 